Hey, yo, check this out. This is Wayne Wonder, representing for Warwicka Hill TV. You see the vision, don't you? See the vision, Warwicka Hill TV. Keep it locked. These are the issues that we need to address. We need to address. We need to address. You understand what I said? You understand what I said? You understand what I said? You see? Set the bar for the youth. Then. For the youth. Then. Share, like, and subscribe and stay tuned to the channel. I right? know you are all this. Yes, I. Greetings once again, not the mighty name of His Imperial Majesty, Emperor Ayla Selassie at first. And all things good and wonderful amongst us and about us. See? And I will play a video for the item where His Majesty visit um, uh, a word play where I will pay attention to another you know, video I hear. So, so the item stay up and point. I hope I keep the item and hold the item in chest. See where President Kennedy, you know, seal the nail in him coffin by making a statement you know up on the reception of his majesty in america seeing him part of the statement was no greater man shall grace these sure you know, see that means that no greater man now go come on the shores of america remember you still have the pope out there you know seeing you have the royal family over here where any day a king would have crack up, especially you know, a man, them the two. Even if we are say, he might make reference to the male gender, he not talk, he would not talk the queen or anybody else like that. You know, see, and we still have some big, powerful, rich guys in America where I play behind the scene. See, so when the president of America got introduced a man, a king, an emperor, a black emperor and declare him as the greatest man to ever grace these sure you know see it i'm sure him say it in a way where he must say no other man shall step on the shores of america greater than his majesty you know see it now more on the item observe the date to you know do the item research themselves and observe the date when um um, President Kennedy made a state, the speech, yeah, and an introduction, yeah, and more of the item observe another thing to how long after that, him doppy bat fly, you know, see, yeah, within months or weeks, I don't, I don't, not, yeah, yeah, but not very long after that, see, program is not perfect, you know, we throw things out there, thought provoking, so that's the item can think and go observe things to themselves too. You know, see, it we don't have the resource, and sometimes we don't have the time for it, display certain things where we know say out there. It's there. We can tell you say there. Can we see to come across it? We experience it. You know, see. Now you don't know if you are Rasta people and if you are people who are in a conflict and confusion regarding His Majesty. So somebody who wasn't in any conflict or any conflict confusion of who His Majesty is. You know, see, so with all due respect and no further long out, we are going to play the video and make the item, you know, come up with them, up, form them opinion and thing like that. No greater man shall grace these shores than you, His Majesty Emperor Ailey Selassie I of Ethiopia. And I give thanks. See, Rastafari. So, one more that I didn't pay attention to, mainly in you know, other one here is symbolism. You know, see, cause even to this day, we as a people you now understand the, the value, the gravity of symbolisms. You know, see, and particularly in them time when black people have got too so much oppression in America, the value of these symbolisms for you have a black man. You know, see, this coming like, a, 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 a viral type of thing something go viral you know what i said because this was the level of the medium where people have as exposure black people wasn't access to these uh, um never have access to these type of mediums you were considered you know way below standard so 
for the vast majority of black people, for the world of black people, um, having this black man getting such, you know, receptions and recognition and things like that from the American public. It meant it was priceless, particularly at the time. Enough man ask and create some finance story why his majesty do for, for the black race. I mean, it's like, you don't know, we're not too, yeah, yeah, kind of more time, like we say, um, the most, the, the, the best soldier of them where the oppressors them have against us, you know, as some of our own them, the most potent soldier of them where the oppressors them have, as some of our own black people like ourselves, so, as some of the least people them who pay attention to more time when them come with certain, um, Liam and Luster. Anyway, pay attention to the symbolisms and, and things like that and know what it meant to, to, to I and I. You know, compare it. No, you can't even compare. It cannot be compared even today to Barack Obama who went and be so-called the first black president of America symbolically without any um, financial, you know, values or anything like that. Um, symbolically, that's because it's priceless. To the whole of a black youth them were born and grow now with that knowledge as opposed to only the knowledge of slavery you know me i said where maintain low self-esteem and low self-confidence and things like that see so these symbolisms um are valuable to everybody else across the world because they know the benefit and the value of these things you know, see we don't know it so we in a seat as anything and we you know apart from all of this we desire we don't know but yeah just Pay attention, it's a, it's a long video, so just make we observe and learn what I'm going. You see, we give thanks. That's the fire, right? Ladies and gentlemen, I know I speak in behalf of all of my fellow Americans in welcoming His Imperial Majesty back to the United States. Since His Majesty visited the United States nearly a decade ago, we have seen one of the most extraordinary revolutions in history. And that has been the appearance on the world scene of 29 independent countries in the short space of less than 10 years, including over 150 million people. The conference recently held in His Majesty's capital served, I think, uh, to bring together in a great uh, cooperative movement the people of most of these countries. And the success of that conference was due in no small part the leadership of our distinguished guest. His efforts to move his country forward and provide a better life for its people, and his efforts uh, throughout the world, which stretch back uh, over 30 or 40 years. For all of this, uh, Your Majesty, we take the greatest pride in welcoming you here. You do us honor, and I can assure you that there is no guest that we will receive in this country that will give uh, a greater sense of lively of pride and satisfaction to the American people with your presence here today. Your Majesty, you're most welcome. The language is French. The degree is Doctor of Humane Letters. The place is the United States. A world leader and educator is being honored. His Imperial Majesty, Emperor Haile Selassie I of Ethiopia. He is no stranger to the atmosphere of learning found on the campus of Georgetown University. Here, students are in direct association with world-renowned scholars in the field of foreign affairs, the arts, and the humanities. Here, the inquiring mind finds nourishment. During the eight-day visit of Haile Selassie to the United States, he will participate in many ceremonies that demonstrate the respect of a friendly nation.
A train with several private cars carries the emperor and his official party swiftly to Washington, D.C., the nation's capital. This will be the first meeting for President John F. Kennedy and Mrs. Kennedy with the man who played a leading role in the creation of African unity. speak in behalf of all of my fellow Americans in welcoming His Imperial Majesty back to the United States. Since His Majesty visited the United States nearly a decade ago, we have seen uh, one of the most extraordinary revolutions in history. And that has been the appearance on the world scene of 29 independent countries in the short space of less than 10 years including over 150 million people. The conference recently held in His Majesty's capital served, I think, uh, to bring together in a great uh, cooperative movement the people of most of these countries. And the success of that conference was due in no small part to the leadership of our distinguished guests. His efforts to move his country forward and provide a better life for its people. And his efforts uh, throughout the world which stretch back uh, over 30 or 40 years. For all of this, uh, Your Majesty, we take the greatest pride in welcoming you here. You do us honor, and I can assure you that there is no guest that we will receive in this country that will give uh, a greater sense of livelier pride and satisfaction to the American people than your presence here today. Your Majesty, you're most welcome. Mr. President, Mrs. Kennedy, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I am deeply touched by the generous words of welcome which you have addressed to me, Mr. President, and by the warmth with which the American people have greeted me during the few short hours I have been in the United States. In the decade which has elapsed since my first voyage to America, the face of the globe has been vastly altered. Africa and Asia have been transformed into continents whose people are almost entirely removed from the subjugated status which was the lot of so many of them but a few short years ago. As free men, we Africans are now seeking the unity and the oneness which will enable us to put our freedom to the best use. The service of the peoples of our continent, the defense of right and justice, the protection of the peace. of Ethiopian women are among the welcoming crowds. The Emperor of Ethiopia has come to Washington to discuss important aspects of world peace and economic progress. He confers with President Kennedy on African problems and aspirations in these vital areas.
the memorial to Abraham Lincoln. The Emperor and his party arrive at the Lincoln Memorial to place a silver wreath in honor of the American president, who is an international symbol of unity and freedom. President Kennedy, Secretary of Interior, Stuart Udall, accompanies the Emperor. Included in the Empress party are Ras Imaru Haile Selassie, Ambassador Dinky, Ethiopian Ambassador to the United States, and Ambassador Corey, United States Ambassador to Ethiopia. Mr. Udall reads from Abraham Lincoln's immortal Gettysburg Address. They gave the last full measure of devotion. That we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain. That this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and that government of the people, by the people, for the people shall not perish from the earth. At the National Legislature, the Vice President of the United States, Lyndon B. Johnson, and leaders of the Senate and House of Representatives hold discussions with the Emperor. This is where the men and women elected by the American people make the laws which govern them and determine American policies and world affairs. In the same room where President Kennedy holds his press conferences, the Emperor meets with over 500 representatives of the American and world press. He describes the purpose of his visit, to renew his acquaintance with our nation and to ensure that the ties of friendship which have linked the two countries over the years will be maintained and strengthened. In reply to one question, the Emperor says, what interests us most in Africa today is the collaboration for the purpose of achieving unity for the benefit of Africa and as a contribution to world peace. <laughs> Departing Washington. The Secretary of State, Dean Rusk, and Mrs. Rusk accompany the Royal Party to a heliport at the Naval Observatory near downtown Washington. Members of the Diplomatic Corps pay their respects to the Emperor and members of the official party, which includes his granddaughter, Her Highness the Princess Ruth Desta. The first stage of the journey is aboard President Kennedy's helicopter to the airport, then on to New York City.
America's largest city. Towers of concrete and steel and organized stone probe the sky. Here, knowledge and culture are available to all who seek it. In libraries. In art museums. In cultural centers. Here is the library of the famed Columbia University where Princess Ruth and many other Ethiopians have studied. the city of New York, Robert F. Wagner and Mrs. Wagner, greet the Lion of Judah on the steps of the city hall. En route to the United Nations, where an open forum, nations can share the benefits of peaceful association. Secretary General Uthant greets the Emperor and is presented with the Charter of African Unity drafted at the Addis Ababa Conference and ratified by the African states. From the people of Ethiopia, a gift to the United Nations, a finely carved miniature of the great obelisk of Aksum, the ancient capital of Ethiopia. The Emperor addresses a special meeting of the General Assembly. The Charter of the United Nations expresses the noblest aspirations of man, the abjuration of force and the settlement of disputes between states, the assurance of human rights and fundamental freedoms for all without distinction as to race, sex, language or religion the safeguarding of international peace and security. Television is another medium of communication through which millions of Americans see and hear the Emperor. On a program devoted to current events, the sight and sound of free discussion is transmitted to the television audience. Gathered in the Emperor's hotel suite is an important resource of his country young people increasing their knowledge in the universities of America. One of the most satisfying moments of his tour, a face-to-face -face meeting with many of the Ethiopian students. In gratitude, they present him with a silver service. He thanks them and replies that the gift he wants most is unity of purpose their cooperation in quickening the pace of Ethiopian development. All are 
working toward this goal. They include Ephraim E. Sock, who conducts the Harvard Graduate School Chorus. His mission, to found a conservatory in Addis Ababa, taking his doctorate at Harvard University, where President Kennedy was also graduated. At Cornell University, Ms. Abba Walder Rufail, a graduate nurse from Ethiopia takes her degree in medical education so that she may go back to her country and instruct others how to teach this science. On the same campus, Bayana Chichai Balu, a former government agricultural agent from Harar in the eastern part of Ethiopia, digs deeper into the science of agronomy, learning to overcome the common problems that face men who work the soil in all parts of the world. His specialty is animal husbandry. Laboratory and field experiments relate to the types of problems he will find in helping to attain greater yields from Ethiopian fields and livestock. Aviation is essential to a nation like Ethiopia, with rugged terrain and isolated areas. This young man, Bayana Gulilat, is mastering the rudiments of flight at a Washington flying school, studying to be a commercial pilot, secure in the knowledge that the skills he is learning will be of importance to his country. and skills of America have been made available to these students through the dedication and foresight of their emperor, Haile Selassie. His visit to the United States is brightened by their progress, and the United States has been honored by his presence.